Hey everybody, this is Dan from Slice Engineering. I'm here with Chris from Nexa, now Nexa 3D. Yep. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, and so we my talk name about is uh, Chris Loftebro. I'm in charge of customer success for the extrusion platforms. And we've just recently joined partnership with Nexa 3D, and it's great, it's a wonderful match. Basically all the machines that Nexa produces are open source, open material, high speed printing, high speed and, and high quality results. So it's been a great match. It's been a lot of fun for me to learn about some of the other technologies and things like that we have that Nexa can offer. It's a really a full service provider now at this point with yeah. three different technologies, right? Laser-based centering technology, yep. the extrusion platform, of course, from Essentium, yep. and the Zip desktop printing. And then yeah. I've also had a lot of fun with the um, X-Mold material mm. and this rapid turn molding thing. I'm not a mold expert, but I'm right. slowly Learning more and more as yeah. we go. But it's been the great. case studies coming out recently about that have been really cool to see because yeah. it's obviously a, a huge area for potential growth right. in rapid turn mold manufacturing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. But yeah, we've had a great time working with Slice. Slice has been an amazing partner. We have a, a kit going here now where we can put the Mosquito Magnum Plus onto our high speed industrial system. And it's just been, it's been wonderful working with you guys. The expertise, the level of professionalism has been great. The customer response from the early adopters has been phenomenal. I just can't wait to get it out to more people and yeah. it help make my life easier as well. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, because you're supporting the customers in the field exactly. all day, every day. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah. It's got a really nice wide process window, plus it's industrial. It matches our machine. I mean, the, the parts are super high quality, very ruggedly made. We haven't had any issues. It's got... Like I said, wide process window, and melts a lot of material. So mm -hmm. with this high-speed printing, you can really keep up with what the motors are capable of doing. Right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's You've got a, great a, match. a slow, hot end with a, yeah. with a fast It doesn't uh, make any difference system, if you can't yeah. melt that material. Right, Yeah. absolutely. Thanks for, for walking us through that. Absolutely. And, uh, and we'll dive a little bit more into the hardware aspect now and, and talk more about the printer itself and then why the Magnum Plus has been a great fit for this system. Perfect. Awesome. I'm here with Ricky now. Ricky, tell us what you do and how long you've been with Essentium slash Nixon. So I'm Ricky Ferrer, I'm in the customer success team and I've been with Essentium since 2020. Wow. And started off in the test department and then got back into what I was more familiar with, which is in the service department. So applications engineering, right? That's, yes, that's what, you're, what yep. you're covering. Yep. Yep. Helping people in the field that have real problems uh, and, and helping them solve those issues. Just giving them, them finding them solutions. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's great. So we've got the 280i here today. That's correct. Talk to me about the machine a little bit. So the 280i is our dual head platform. We start off with the 180, which is a single head. The 280, similar platform, but we added an additional head, but it's true independent heads. Mm. So each head can move independently. It's X, Y, and the Z comes up from the bed movement. Okay. Yep. And high speed, so in high temp, so we can do our more engineering grade materials like UMP, Alltem, right. Duratem, and controlled heated fill volume environment. Oh. So HSC is high speed extrusion, right? High speed extrusion, yeah. HT, high temperature, right? Correct, yeah. yes. And I for the uh, independent heads. Okay, interesting. All right, cool. And what's the 280 for? So 180 was single head, right. two. It started basically from the fill volume dimensions. Got gotcha. it. Build volume. Yeah. So the build but volume the two, is 180. Yes, two was for the second head. Okay, yeah. cool. So what's the build chamber temperature that this can go up to? So we can set it as high as 200 for the bed and the chamber heat. Mm -hmm. You'll probably see you're anywhere between 150 to 180 for inside the chamber. Gotcha. Yeah. It. And what's the advantage of being able to go to a high temperature on the chamber? So if you don't control the heat in the chamber, and you're doing high temperature materials, you can have a tendency for the part to warp off the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you don't control the heat all around it. It's and helps totally with, unusable at that point. Correct, yeah, yeah. and help with the inner layer as well. So independent heads, what's the benefit of having independently moved heads? So we can have different profile or different modes of operation. So mm -hmm. Of course, you can run a dual head as a single head if you wanted to mm -hmm. with just your modern material. Right. But the benefit of having a second head is that you can run support, mm -hmm. for example, right. on the second head. So a different material, you can run both heads at the same time, same part, 
which we call copy mode. Okay. And yeah, it's like duplicating. Duplicating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in the future, we kind of come out with the independent mode, so you can do what two type of different model, parts, two different parts, same yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that, how, do you have a timeline for for that for the two independent parts? Still working on it. So yeah. yeah okay. It's been, it's been cool. development. Yeah. Still. Yeah, that's a hard problem to solve. Correct, yeah, because yeah. you have to worry about the flatness of the bed and right. how you're going to maintain the leveling sure. with both heads running at the same time on the same surface. How do you guys do bed leveling? So in, for bed leveling, when you hold the machine, we'll have the bed come down to look for three sensors. Mm -hmm. We have three Z-axes. Once it finds that, it'll raise the bed up automatically to touch down at several points of the bed to get a general idea on where the bed is as far as flatness when it first finds those three sensors. From there, it does a calculation based on those points it found, what I need to do for the second and third Z-axis mm -hmm. to phase it relative to, to get the first plane. axis to yeah. get it three point covering a plane, yeah. probably get that pretty flat. Mm -hmm. That's cool. The next step after that, if you choose to do a large part, we have another feature for planarization of the bed. So mm -hmm. we'll do a mesh of the bed and find out how the contours are of the flatness of the bed mm. and we'll do calculations and we'll move our Z axes, coordinate our axes to be able to compensate for that. Mm. Cool. So automatic compensation in the software, that's that's pretty impressive. Yes. Yeah. And how often are your customers printing a really large part that requires that mesh versus just establishing the plane? It varies. Yeah. Uh, not, most of the time they're doing small parts in certain parts of the bed. Right. But every now and then they'll have a larger part. I was at a customer a few weeks back in Michigan. Mm -hmm. They were doing a larger print, so they do need to bed level actually right. from both heads. So mm -hmm. we mesh both T0 and T1. Heads. Gotcha. Yeah. As you mentioned Michigan, I imagine that's an automotive customer, right? Correct, yes. <laughs> so what kind of applications are people using the 280i for? So in that case, when they were printing with our machine when I was there, they were doing cooling ducts for batteries. Okay. Now. For like any EVs? EVs. Okay, yeah. cool. That's uh, Now I'm really curious who it is, but I won't, I won't <laughs> ask you to tell me, so uh, <laughs> at least not on camera. Um, all right, so what are any other features that you want to highlight about the 280i? Well, we can open up and sure, the, yeah. To the camera, we got into here. So, there's some samples of some printed parts that we have out of our new material. Sign okay. On. Now, with the head or the machine having two heads, every time we do a print with a dual head, we have to make sure we wipe the nozzles clean. So, sure. we have added these wipe stations on each side. Okay. And the way they work is between layers or between the tool changes, we'll come over to the wipe stations. And that's this we'll, here. That's correct. Yeah. So, we'll do a purge in the wipe station. And after we do a purse of a certain length of material, we'll do a wipe, and we have an option to wipe over a blade or a brush. Mm. Okay. So we do that for these dual, dual head prints. Now, having dual heads, we have to make sure that they're calibrated well with each other. Sure. And one of the things we've added for the dual head machine is this little button here with, with that we call the calibration pin. Okay. So the calibration pin, it'll do a touchdowns with each head and find out where they are relative to each other in the XYZ space. And it can adjust them automatically? adjust them automatically. Yeah. yeah. We try to get them close mechanically. Sure. And then from there, the software can make small adjustments to the positions so that where T0 lands, T1 will land in the same spot and for when they have to. That's very cool. Yeah. That's a lot of uh, a lot of code that goes over my head to be able to figure that out. <laughs> very cool. What build service material are you guys using? So right now, we call this our G14 material. And it's been the, the runner for most of our materials. Mm -hmm. Pretty much running anything on this from low temp to high temp. You know, even all temp will print well on this. Okay. And in some cases, the material sticks so well, we have to use adhesive to make sure it will, will release easily. As okay, well. yeah. yeah. PLA is one of them. Right. PLA loves to stick to stick this. Stick to the, the yeah. G14. Interesting. So, cool. heated bed with vacuum, to okay. suck the plate down. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with your part, we can cool the part down, we can mm -hmm. cool the bill volume down so you can just. Turn off the vacuum, take the plate off, and bend the part right off. Right. Stick back That's on. That's very cool. And you've got uh, kind of the modular... Canisters. Canisters. Uh, yeah, which yeah. spool canisters. So yeah. we'll take spools after they've been dry, which I really encourage. But yeah. a lot of customers, you know, they try to go straight from the bag, and yeah. we always encourage, take your filaments, and get, get it back to like a known state, put it in the dry box. We have here the DB90, which does have some smart bake feature, so you can put it in there and set it to a certain temp for a certain amount of time, let it run overnight, whichever. Okay. When it's fully baked and dried, you cool down, so it's important to make sure that your filaments do come to room temp before you pull them out. You pull them out hot, 
they can absorb some of right. the moisture. Yeah. yeah, you've you've got more activation energy at that point in the filament. Correct. To yeah. Just re reabsorb. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So to avoid undoing what you just did. Yeah. Let it cool down. Bring it over to the canister. So you can take the canisters out from the base. Yeah. And roll it over if on the, wheels. The, if the dry box is actually across the, the shop floor, mm -hmm. you can roll it over to that, put it into the canister, mm -hmm. roll it back to the machine. We have six bays you can choose from where you want to place it. Close it up, and then from there, we feed the filament up into these lower buffers. Mm -hmm. These devices will pull the filament up into this upper buffer where it monitors how much slack is in the system. Mm -hmm. When the machine consumes the, the filament as it's doing the print, It'll tell the lower buffer to feed, feed some more. Yeah, uh, it can keep the system yeah. fed. So it's it's got a push-pull system, right? Because there's something pulling from the print head. Yes, and correct. then you're pushing it. Or yes. I guess also pulling here, but uh, it's pulling yeah. down from yeah, this yeah. bowl. That was cool. And that's yeah. very cool. What is this? Is this our, our big power that's switch? That's our main power okay. switch. Yeah. 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 Talk to me about the hot end. Our, so our collaboration, obviously, we built a hot end for you guys. Yes, we're uh, so excited. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. It's been in talks and a lot of development has gone into this and this has been game changing. Mm. So I fielded several of these units out in the field, mostly to military bases. And we have these fielded, not just in the US, across the US, but yeah. even overseas as well. Mm. And uh, our customers have been raving about it. Awesome. Uh, for <laughs> Love hearing that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what's neat about it is that we can print filaments either cooler mm. or we can print them at a higher temp and faster. Mm. So right. you can choose what to, which way you want to go with yeah. that. Yeah. And you guys came to us, I guess, for a particular application originally, right, with softer materials. Yeah. And so you found that this has just solved that issue for him. Correct, right? yeah. With so now we materials. can go as low as 95A or TPUs. Mm -hmm. But the same hot end, which was neat, is that not only can you do flexibles, but you can also do peaks, which mm -hmm. a lot of customers have struggled trying to print peaks. It's right. not, not that easy of a, a material to print with. Yeah. You could do this with the, with the same hot <laughs> That's end. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. And the tips are interchangeable. So the little brass tips, so in the very common, right. right? You can easily get those and change them out. So if you want to change the tip out, you don't have to go up into the gantry. Right. Just do it all from below. Yeah. With your, the included torque wrench. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So very simple to run. Mm -hmm. And anything happens with the hot end, so you take a little bump on the hot end. Mm -hmm. Easy to rebuild. We've done right. that. I've done that in the field, and I've trained customers how to do it. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Right. Yeah, and awesome. they're back up and running. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for walking us through this, Ricky. Appreciate you taking the time to explain everything. And uh, yeah, it's been been great working with you on this. Great. Thanks, yeah. Daniel. Chris, thanks for talking a little bit about what you guys have been doing with Nexa. Mm -hmm. Super exciting to see all the advances yeah. and changes in the industry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, where can people find out more information? Uh, yeah, you can find out stuff about all of our products uh, at nexa3d.com. And also follow us on LinkedIn. We're posting stuff all the time. Yeah, no, it's been a real pleasure working with you guys. Looking forward to more and more as we go along. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you.